Okay, chapter eight. By the next morning, he was half sorry the boy would not be coming again. He didn't know whether he was annoyed or relieved when Atian walked through the door without a sign of greeting and sat down at the table. Matt decided to skip B for Bone. In the night, he had thought of a better way. This book isn't a treaty, he began. It's a story. It's about a man who gets shipwrecked on a desert island. I'll read some of it out loud to show you. He opened Robinson Crusoe at the first page and began to read. I was born in the year 1632 in the city of York. He stopped. He remembered suddenly how the first time he had tried to read this book, he had found that first page so dull, he had come close to giving up right there. He had better skip the beginning and get on with the story if he wanted to catch Atian's attention. Uh, I'll read the part about the storm at sea, he said. He had read the book so many times that he knew exactly where to find the right page. Taking a deep breath, as though he were struggling in the water himself, he chose the page where Robinson Crusoe was dashed from the lifeboat and swallowed up in the Alex C. Nothing can describe the confusion of thought which I felt when I sunk into the water, for though I swam very well, yet I could not deliver myself from the waves so as to draw breath, for I saw the sea come after me as high as a great hill and as furious as an enemy. Matt looked up from the page. There was not a flicker of interest in the boy's face. Had he understood a single word? Discouraged, he laid down the book. What did a storm at sea mean to a savage who had lived all his life in the forest? Well, he said lamely, it gets better as you go along. Once more, Atian took him by surprise. White man, get out of water? He asked. Oh, yes, Matt said delighted. Everyone else on the ship is drowned. He gets thrown up all alone on an island. The Indian nodded. He seemed satisfied. Shall I read more of it? Atia nodded again. Go now, he said. Come back, Siba. The next morning, there was no question of B for bone. Matt had the book open and waiting at the part he wanted to read. This is about the morning after the storm. He exclaimed, he explained, Robinson Crusoe looks out and sees that part of the ship hasn't sunk yet. He swims out and manages to save some things and carry them to shore. He began to read. Once again, it was impossible to tell whether Atian understood. Presently, Matt slowed down. It was discouraging reading to a wooden post, but Atian spoke at once. White man not smart like Indian, he said scornfully. Indian not need thing from ship. Indian make all thing he need. Disappointed and cross, Matt put the book down. They might as well get on with the alphabet. He drew a B on the birch bark. After Atien had gone, Matt kept thinking about Robinson Crusoe and all the useful things he had managed to salvage from the ship, or from that ship. He had found a carpenter's chest, for instance, bag of nails, two barrels of bullets, and a dozen hatchets, a dozen. Why, Matt and his father had come up here to Maine with only one ax and an adze. They had cut down trees and built this whole cabin and the table and the stools without a single nail. Crusoe had found a hammock to sleep in instead of prickling, oh, prickly hemlock bows. He could see now how it must have sounded to Atian. Come to think of it, Robinson Crusoe had lived like a king on that desert island. <laughs>